This is Digital Podcaster, hosted by Dylan Schmidt. What is going on, family? I am a little bit pumped up because I've got a lot of caffeine running through my blood right now, but also I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited for everything. I'm just excited for the future. You know, there's been a lot of love shared on the Instagram lately, which feels good. Love feels good, you know, and there's a lot of craziness in the world. I was thinking it earlier today, what I was going to say in this intro, and I think I've got it. I haven't even thought about it too much, but I have been thinking about this one thing because I don't really talk about current events. I don't really talk about what's going on in the world today, but I do for a second. I do want to say one thing that is going on in the world today. It doesn't matter where at in the world you are. Things are crazy. Things are absolutely freaking crazy right now, no matter where you are. And, and we're here doing it. And it's pretty freaking cool because despite how wild the world is, we're still here focusing on bettering ourselves, making an impact and growing the, our own platform so that we can influence the world in a better way, which is like pretty freaking awesome. I've said freaking like three or four times already in this episode. I don't know if I say it in today's interview, but we'll see. We'll see. We need a freaking meter. We need a freaking meter. Um, so a little bit about today's guest. Her name is Seema and she is living in India. She lived in America. I found out, uh, for a few years, um, a few years ago. And she is awesome. So she is like a branding expert and she is incredible. I connected with her originally on Instagram and then I was like, eh, you want to be on the podcast, please? And what do you know? She said yes. And we had a fun conversation. I learned uh, a lot about myself. Um, I was listening back to this episode and I realized um, it sounds like I'm almost like going through therapy or something at some points apologies ahead of time for that. Um, but also, uh, Seema and I are, um, similar in so many ways. And you'll probably notice that through the episode as well. Um, she helps a lot of introverts. So if you identify as an introvert, um, then this will be handy. And if you don't identify as an introvert in person in real life, uh, but maybe you identify as an introvert or feel socially strange online, then maybe we could just for the sake of today's conversation, label that as introvert online. You know, um, I don't really hear about people just being, in- I mean, actually, you know what? Some of the most extroverted people in person are kind of introverted online. Not that that's a bad thing. You know, everything's welcome. Everything's cool. But maybe um, if you feel like you're not expressing yourself and maybe the way you want to express yourself, this episode should help you get clear on that. And what else? A couple things before we dive in. Um, as of this recording, SEMA has an awesome course available. I'm going to link to that in the show notes. And um, what else? What else? What else? That is pretty much it. But I do want to share one quick story about SEMA before uh, we just dive into the conversation because it does just kick off. There's not like a, hey, so tell me about the time in second grade, Um, all that. No, we just dive right in. That's how I do this podcast. So SEMA is awesome. And then after the podcast, I had connected with her through Instagram quite a bit and I've like, then it just made me realize more and more how similar we are. And we have a very similar sense of humor um, because, you know, sometimes I am absolutely silly and then sometimes I'm serious, but not like to the point of serious where I can't kind of switch out of it. She has a great sense of humor. Um, and she sent me a couple, a couple weeks ago. She sent me, uh, oh my gosh, I'm okay. I'm connecting all the dots here. She sent me a box from India. I'm in Los Angeles sent me a box of 36 Reese, 36 uh, packages of Reese's peanut butter cups. So that's actually like, uh, I think it was 36. It felt like more at this point. Um, that's actually 72 peanut butter cups. And in my refrigerator right now is the last one. So I think it was like two weeks that it's taken me. I've eaten that many peanut butter cups in two weeks. That's so many peanut butter cups. I, I, I need... I need to speak on to an expert on self-control because clearly I don't have much, but Seema, I'm going to blame Seema publicly for putting me in that situation. 
she didn't know it's not her fault. It's not her fault. It was actually very, I was very excited and thankful. Um, but yeah, that's so many. So I have, I'm going to eat that peanut butter cup while I listen to this episode. And, um, if you have a peanut butter cup (laughs) in your kitchen, maybe you want to enjoy a peanut butter cup too. We don't talk about peanut butter cups on this episode except now. Um, but she has sent me that and she's just super nice and super cool and super knowledgeable. And it goes deeper than just like some branding. It's really cool. You'll find out really fast. So without further ado, here's Seema and our conversation about building a personal brand and showcasing your expertise online. Here it is. I'm like trying to do the opposite of what everyone's doing. I know, especially as like an introvert, it's like hard for me to put myself out there, connect with people, all that stuff. So I'm like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the opposite of what I want to do because I know that a lot of people aren't doing that. And that's, what's going to set me apart. And I don't know if it'll pay off. I don't know if it's right, but I have a lot of people will write me and go like, how do you do that? And to me, I'm just like, how do I do what? And they're like, how do you put yourself out there and just keep doing it? Like, you're so confident. And I'm like, I don't feel confident. I'm just I'm just recording like to me, confidence, I don't know, it doesn't feel like a heroic act by any means, but like how, how do you work with people who are introverts and want to put themselves out there more? The funny thing is most introverts do not want to put themselves out there more, but what they yeah. would like is the byproduct of it, which is the visibility, right? They all want to yeah. be known. They all want the people to to know them for something, to be popular, to get the respect and have people around them. But the act of putting themselves out there is not something that they like or they look forward to or they want to do at all, which is where we have to identify what the the core reason is that they want to do it to begin with. Like, what is the reasoning that you want that fanfare? Why do you want the visibility? How will popularity change things for you? So what I really believe in is digging very, very, very deep And it comes down to what you've been through, your childhood experiences, the people you've interacted with, the people around you, your traumas. And getting to the root of that and identifying that with why you feel that you have the need to be visible and how that's Mm -hmm. going to change your identity as well. Because Mm -hmm. we have, as introverts, we have this narrative that, okay, I'm not seen my entire life. Most introverts, I'm not saying all. I'm not seen, so I need to be seen. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the time, this narrative can be unfounded because it's something we've built up over time because we have been self-isolating for such a long time and we feel that this visibility is going to validate us in some way. Yeah. But on a very, very foundational level, if you want to be visible, if you want to be seen, the act of putting yourself out there is just an action that you have to take. It's a very unfamiliar action. Right. Yeah. And it's something that most of us have never done before. And just the thought of it has people running towards the hills. And that's why when I am saying I help you as an introvert, build your personal brand is tell us what to do. Tell us how to do it. (laughs) But it's it's less than the action plan. It's more, huh, let me dissect you a little bit and see why you want to do this to begin with. So I go very, very deep. Yeah. So So it's it's not necessarily like one size fits all it's not oh all introverts are dealing with this thing like they all it's uh but they all need this one same thing it's different for each person on what they need to put themselves out there more absolutely a lot of people are very surface level where they're quite sorted they have no unpacking to do they have nothing to um go through in terms of the internal work and they're pretty okay they're like i actually just need an action plan i really don't know what to do that way what the strategy would be they actually need a step-by-step plan but for those who are kind of like holding on to a lot of internal resentment maybe those who feel like their introversion is keeping them from something that takes mm-hmm. a much deeper approach. So mm-hmm. I, I don't believe in giving everyone the same solution because it doesn't work, right? Because everyone's yeah. motivations are very, very different. But I do feel like at some point in the journey, they all kind of come to the same point. There's a leveling off point where maybe someone yeah. starts from here, someone starts from here, but they all kind of yeah. like get to this one point where it, got, it gets neutral. And they're like, okay. Yeah. I've unpacked everything I needed to, and now I'm kind of ready to put myself out there. Yeah, like now I can move forward. Yeah. Yeah. And you, I 
think you said it. you you would say you're introverted yourself massively yeah <laughs> have you found that like the more you've put yourself out there especially online has it translated to like in person face to face that's a hard one because I was in corporate before I embarked on this whole personal branding thing. I was in corporate for a decade and I was at a oh, very wow. senior level position. So I'd worked myself up the corporate ladder. I was, I, I was the highest I could go. And as an introvert, what happens is you kind of learn these coping mechanisms, right? You know how yeah. to fake it till you make it as far as your personality yeah. goes. You know how to turn it on and turn it off. So I kind of already had those coping mechanisms where I knew where when I'm in the public eye or I'm associating with someone or talking to someone, how to turn that on. But this version of me that you see right now, this is probably the most authentic that you're going to see. Right? Mm -hmm. So now when I come across someone, so I'm no longer in corporate, this is my business <laughs> now. Now when I come across someone in real life and they're like, hey, so you're, you're doing this business thing now. How's that going? Yeah. That makes me like go inside my shell. I'm like, I do not want to talk about this. This is so weird. Yeah, like they see you. They're like, I see, I see you doing this thing. Like I'm looking at you like, whoa. Damn, why are you following me though? Like, yeah, you know, let, yeah. me, <laughs> let me be in my yeah. shell a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. yes, I, I, I do know how to come out of that very quickly because it's okay everything that i'm saying all day you see yeah. what i'm teaching so yeah. that that veil that you have that protection that you have that that, that wears off and then you like own yeah. it after a while so yeah. I, i'd say yeah yeah that's interesting you say that about when you say if someone will comment on what you're doing i had someone also comment on what i'm doing couple weeks a week about a week ago someone that i've known my whole life and i'm like transparent i've talked about it on instagram like i will block pretty much anybody that i know in real life like and like for the most part not like everybody i know in real life but people that are closest to me i don't care like i just block you because i put i'm putting myself out there so much and i don't want them to feel like they have to like my stuff and i'm just like you're too close get out of here i don't even post stuff on my personal page because that's uh, but in person, totally talk to him. You know, totally talk. Like, I'll tell them everything. I, 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 I don't know. I have a conversation with them online. Nah, get out of here. I mean, I can't block them from everything. But And it's not like the list is too long. But we're talking just a, a couple people to a few. And it just makes me feel better because it makes me feel more free to be able mm -hmm. to not feel like, not that I feel like they're judging me, but I feel like I don't ever want them to feel like they have to support me because I used to play like in bands and music and like my background is in music and I don't know. There's something like, especially when like after high school and, and, and playing in some bands where you're like trying to gain a following before social media, it was like, come see our band live, come see our band live. And I always kind of like, didn't really care for that. Cause I just wanted people to come cause they wanted to come, not cause I'm telling them to go. Mm -hmm. And if, if someone was like, Oh, like I'd love to, I want to follow you. I want to do that stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. But it's just, I don't know. I'm like, I'll block my dad in a heartbeat. Cutthroat. I'm cutthroat, Seema. <laughs> you gotta go. Off hey, with your head. Block you if you look at me wrong. Seema, if you look at me wrong, blocked. I'm just I'm kidding. A, I'm just kidding. I'm a chubby I would never. I would, yeah, right? <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I'm mean, not, not like, actually, and I welcome debate and like criticism and stuff like that. It's not like I'm like, oh, they're going to call me out or something like that. No, I don't block everybody, but there's, whether it's, I don't know. It's just kind of explained it enough, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. Have you ever have you ever heard of someone doing that? <laughs> I know where you're coming from. Because mm -hmm. it's very different when you meet someone when you're on this journey already, and they know you as this different identity. And it's mm -hmm. different when it's someone you've known your entire life, they've probably seen your ups and downs, they've probably yeah. seen you growing up awkwardly, they've probably, they probably have a different idea of who you are, right? And then yeah, all I of think, a sudden, yeah. It's this, this whole different version of you that's probably more confident, probably more talkative, probably more mm -hmm. like eloquent and doing all this interesting yeah. stuff. Beautiful. It, it cha beautiful. I'm just, I'm just it, kidding. I'm just it, kidding. I'm just I mean, <laughs> it challenges their identity completely. And it's yeah. just the same person. So yeah. more than um, you being awkward around it, it's more like yeah. they feel as if they don't know this part of you. And because yeah. of that, it can bring up a lot of different feelings in both of you, right? Yeah. It can feel like, oh, where was this person all along? Like, who, who are you? I never knew that you yeah. did this. And it's yeah. also like, 
but maybe you wouldn't have supported me if you knew this side of me or maybe you should yeah. have supported me all along. So it brings up yeah. a lot of these feelings, especially if you've known someone for so long. But there's yeah. also this element of you don't want them to feel obligated or anything like that. Uh, yeah. I get very awkward when someone from yeah. real life follows me or someone from real life mentions what I'm doing or even makes a comment. I'm just like, ah, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is yeah. so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what's it you made me kind of connect the dots in my head without trying to connect the dots mm. in my head. Like also I feel like I've I've been around other successful people that have platforms that would get recognized in public mm. and when someone like you there's like a different thing behind the eyes when like a fan recognize them, them in public and and it's not like a bad thing it's not but it's just like a different type of thing and when I know somebody and they're like oh my gosh I love when you shared this thing and it's, I'm not trying to speak to this person mm -hmm. at the same thing I'm trying to speak to other people so I almost am like afraid in some way that like the person that I'm like that's like a sister or a cousin to me like that they'll turn into kind of a different it'll change our relationship and I'm wait hold on I don't want I don't know I just kind of I still want to not that I don't I, I, I think I share like pretty pretty authentically online I would say but just I'm like don't don't look at me any different like <laughs> I'm still the same person and I'm like don't don't turn into a not, not a follower but like don't 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 I look know. at me any different I guess I, yeah. I know what you mean but you know what yeah. happens though it's very easy to slip into that role as well like I'm a coach and mm -hmm. there are times when I'll just be speaking to friends or speaking to someone and they start talking about things that they're going through or maybe yeah. just talking about their problems I automatically slip into my coaching yes. role yes even yeah. though they don't need that at the time or even yeah. though they feel like they're just venting or they're just having yeah. a discussion, I immediately go into that role and start being a coach. And they're like, yeah, what is going on? Why are you giving me advice? Yeah. I'm not yeah. looking for advice right now. Yeah, I'm not I'm looking like, for sorry. advice. Yeah. I'm like, sorry, sorry. It's just a, it's just a occupational yeah. hazard, but that happens as well, <laughs> right? Because yeah. that, that role, which is on. So I feel like with, yeah. with your relatives as well, when, yeah. They see you in this role. It's, huh, yeah. okay, so if he's the guy who's great at podcasts, yeah. I'm going to go for all my podcast issues to him. Or it's yeah. become that guy. Become that Yeah, person. oh, yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, I get it all. Like, it's funny because the person I'm referring to, actually, I'm talking to a lot. She's going through relationship issues. And uh, it's funny. It's, hey, he can deal with podcasts. He can deal with relationships. But, but I do love, like, relationship dynamics anyway. So it's not, and I have a little bit of background in, like, coaching and life coaching too. So I don't know if, I don't, I don't think she knew that. So I, I don't know where she's, but yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, it's so easy to slip into that coaching mode where it's, I'll help you. It um, really is. Which it's is a cool. vibe. It's just a vibe, right? You're just like, it's a vibe, yeah. I, I see that you're hurting. I'm here yeah. for you. It's like a siren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got yeah. you. Hey, I, can I got you. you. <laughs> I can help you with that. I love that. Okay. Question. I've always wanted to ask somebody, but never had the opportunity to until now is you mentioned you were from like a corporate background. Mm -hmm. I am not, I've like, I've, I'm just not, I don't fit into the corporate thing. Like I got, a, I also got a lot of tattoos. You can't see, I don't know. It's like my, my grammar isn't always the best. I don't, I don't know. Suits are too hot. I'm just, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not corporate. And mm -hmm. I've always looked at corporate people uh, like differently, like to me mm -hmm. as an introvert, I guess, or, or I, I'm using introvert. I don't even know if I'm always using introvert is the right word, but I look at like corporate life is so freaking draining. Like you have to put on this face to climb up the corporate ladder and you have to be this person to navigate the corporate sphere. And it just, is it, is that true? Is it like that draining is like, it just seems exhausting to show up every day and be like, hi, how you doing, Mark? And it's, is, is there room for realness and authenticity in the corporate world? There is. There is. There I is. Think That's good. It completely depends on the job and the role that you're in. And mm -hmm. I've been in amazing jobs. I've been in terrible jobs. Like I've seen pretty much all ends of the spectrum in terms of corporate. Mm -hmm. And it really, really comes down to the kind of people that you work for. The overall mm. culture and the environment of the place dictates your experience a lot, right? It, it mm. dictates how you can express yourself, how you fit in, how well mm. uh, you work with other people, if you truly, truly enjoy your job or not. 
a lot of people have this tendency to grab the first job they get after graduating and they just stick to it for like years and years, right? Because it's just yeah. convenient. It's they, they go to the same domain, even if they switch jobs. It's, there's no room for experimentation after that. Yeah. So if yeah. you find yourself in the perfect job, in the perfect company, among the perfect people, it is highly, highly rewarding because you actually mm -hmm. start looking forward to going to work every day because you enjoy <laughs> the people you work with. You enjoy yeah. doing the work that you do because it truly brings you joy. It's really in your zone of genius and you don't even feel like you're working. Mm -hmm. And there's security. There's a paycheck coming every month. So you know that you're taken care of. So I would have to say there are good jobs. There are bad jobs, but there definitely are great jobs out there if it's the right fit for you. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, it's one of those things I'm like, it never seems like it leaves much room for creativity starting a business does. Mm. And it just, I don't know. It's, I guess, have you found like, since you've gone the more entrepreneur route that your stress has gone down and everything's gotten way easier, right? No. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, it takes a lot of moxie to to be an entrepreneur, and I don't yeah. think I realized that. I kind of slipped into this entire mm. experience, and I'm just taking it as it comes. But I feel like those who are true born entrepreneurs, those serial entrepreneurs who kind of like get an idea and just go for it, mm -hmm. I, I give them serious kudos because it is not easy, right? Yeah. There is so much on the line. There is so much rejection on hand. There is so much risk on hand. There is so much. You need to be a visionary to be yeah. able to bring an idea to life. And I highly, highly respect that. And I feel like going from a corporate environment where all you have to worry about is showing up and doing your job and collect a paycheck at the end of the month, right? Full security and maybe getting to work and coming back from work. Yeah. To the point where you're pretty much managing this whole new ecosystem and you are the driver of the entire thing, especially if you're a brand new solo entrepreneur doing the entire yeah. thing by yourself to start with. Yeah, it, every step of the way. It's like it, it doesn't it, move forward if you don't mm -mm. do every single thing. Mm -mm. You have one it's bad like day, your business stalls. You're like, mm -mm. Yeah. you got to get up and do yeah. it. It doesn't matter. So yeah, I have nothing but respect for entrepreneurs. And yeah, yeah. it is stressful. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. And I, I don't like judge or, or think any less of anybody who chooses like a corporate route or just another career route. Doesn't even have to be super corporate. It's just because it's, there's certainty in there. And I know some people it's, I don't have kids and, and all these dependents, but if I did, it's like, how do you do that and do an entrepreneur? Like, whew, especially start things I know get more stable over time, but just starting out from there, it's, that's, that's so much risk. I was talking to a man the other day, this guy, John on Instagram live the other day we did a live and he has, you know, two kids and he's starting a new business and just like, man, shout out to you, like for being able to do that, because I know any extra hours in the day, it's, you probably just want them for yourself. And the fact that you're choosing to do it, to create a business, to create a better life for yourself and your family is this like, it's so commendable. Massively. Cool. I, I have respect for that so much because even like single moms or you see yeah. all these people juggling kids and their jobs to start a business and oof, it's insane. I think they're super people, yeah. super women, super men. Yeah. I am not married. I don't have kids. So I'm just sitting here. Wow. <laughs> I think I yeah. have it kind of easy. Now I think about people who don't have as much time as I do. Yeah. Seriously, just talent. Yeah, my neighbor is a single mom with four kids and and i'm just like always in awe of everything and they're all under like i think they're all around like 18 and younger and i'm just like what are like she's like whenever i think of like inspiration or i'm like i'm tired and i'm just thinking i'll hear her car if i'm in the front part of my house like i'll hear her car go by or something and i'm just like she's always coming and going because she's always got to take someone somewhere and it's just so inspiring because i'm like what am i tired about like, <laughs> What? Oh, I had to wake up a little early. Oh, poor me. Like she is, she doesn't have time to be tired. Like mm -hmm. she has just to go because there is four bodies relying on her. And yeah, and that's not even going into any of the, the kids. Yeah, but it's just, it's so inspiring. So when it comes to personal brand building, mm -hmm. I'll tell you where like I see from my perspective is there's, there is people that 
want to have what someone else has. Like they see your page on Instagram, Seema, and they're like, I want that. I don't know what it is, but I just want what Seema's got. And they don't really know what makes up your page or what makes your brand. Like most people, and I'm, I, I like, I love the fundamentals because people are so quick to give me the experts. I know you got the, the, the fun. Nah, 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 nah. I want like the, I can take it. Seema. I, I can take the hard. Zone. Hold on. Let's just start at the very, very basics because that's where everything else will stem from. Mm-hmm. So they'll see, I, I know people will see like your page and they'll go, I, I just want that. Can't you just give me, I just want, what's, what's the difference between my page is basically the same. And speaking specifically to Instagram for a second, like then we'll go on their page. They'll post it like once in the last six months. They it'll be and it, the only thing they posted was like a picture of a piece of grass and it will say, I believe you can and you're halfway there. And then the picture before that was a picture of their dog with no caption. And then a picture before that was like a picture of someone that we don't know who they are. And it'll say some other inspirational quote. I'm like, what does this have to do with anything? So I think people are just confused amongst the idea of what is like personal branding and like, how does it even work? Like what, what did, how do you see it? What is it to you? I guess. Well, first of all, what Seema has that other people don't is anxiety. <laughs> if you want it, I got, I'm into that. I got that. In I'll drink space. some more coffee to that. <laughs> 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 oh my God. I feel like we're, we're so similar in so many ways. <laughs> we probably are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but at the very, very heart of it, uh, I would have to say that it is pretty much you. The reason yeah. that I started this particular page to begin with was because I felt like something was lacking and I, I needed a creative outlet. And I mm-hmm. just started talking about something that I knew very, very well because that was my corporate background was branding and marketing. And I truly, truly enjoy it but not in the way that I was enjoying it at work. There was still something lacking. So when I had time during quarantine and the Mm -hmm. lockdown, I started this humble page. And the reason I stuck to it and it got to a point where it started getting some traction was because I truly, truly, truly enjoyed what I was talking about. And I believed Mm -hmm. in it. And I loved showing up every single day. And to me, it was never about an agenda. I Mm -hmm. did not intend to make money out of it. I did not intend for it to gain even like a thousand followers, let alone anything else. And it was only after I realized that there was something here and I started looking at the reactions of people. I started seeing how it was actually helping people. It became a resource for other people to actually come to and take a look at and interact with me where I realized that. There's more than what meets the eye here. It's no longer just about me sharing information. It's because I'm actually interacting with people. They're here for my take on the entire issue. And that's what personal branding is at the core, is you just pick something that is truly, truly you or a part of you. You keep showing up as that, as you, interacting with people and sharing interesting information, value, whatever you want to call it. And you get to a point where you start knowing your audience and it becomes such a core part of your day that it it becomes synonymous with who you are. It doesn't feel disjointed anymore. It doesn't feel like a performance. It doesn't feel like, oh, I'm going to post like a blade of grass or I'm going to post a dog photo. You sure can if that's a part of your brand, right? If you've presented yourself as such. For me, a big part of my brand was dad jokes. I told them all the time. yeah. All the time. And that to me was a very honest depiction of who I was and my audience loved it. So Mm -hmm. it really, really, there is nothing more to it than finding what truly makes you you, what you can talk about all day, every day, and showcase in a way that's very cohesive. The problem that people have is actually sticking to it, right? They feel like they're going to see some kind of a result, whatever their version of a result might be in let's say a week or two weeks but that's that's not how it usually works it takes time for it to sink in and for it to take hold and for people to actually recognize who you are and what you represent to them so just just be yourself y'all i know it's it's a very cliche thing to say but at the core of it that's exactly what it is is to just find something that you really love and how how do you like balance the thing of, well, I said that already. Like, I know that a lot of people will feel like that, especially people that are helping other people. They're like, Mm. I don't want to repeat my, I don't want to. And it's not that they don't want to say the same thing twice, but Mm. they're afraid of saying the same thing twice in a way. They're like, well, 
I already made a post about that or I already spoke about that thing on an Instagram live 45 minutes into the Instagram live. Like what, what advice do you have for anyone who is thinking I already, I already said that. I think you're underestimating just how much information there is out there. So, <laughs> yeah. And I mean this in the nicest way, right? So if you take yeah. a full category like branding, branding mm-hmm. has a million different pieces to it, right? Yeah. And every, every single piece has different things that go into that. And mm-hmm. how granular you want to get, how minutely you want to dissect something is entirely up to you and, and what you want to talk about. It's okay to repeat concepts as much as you want to. I repeat posts all the time because honestly, you will be getting new eyeballs. There will be new people joining. There'll be new people following you. Even the old people, they might see something once, they forget about it. And the next week you post it again, they're like, oh, I've never seen this before. Well, really? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So we underestimate, first of all, how much information you can actually talk about. You can really, really talk about a lot of things in in many, many different ways. And secondly, we also overestimate the attention span of the average user. Yeah. So you may feel like you're repeating yourself, but maybe all you're doing is reinforcing a concept but maybe in a different way. So you can still yeah. say the same thing, but if you phrase it differently or if you bring something else as an emphasis or something else to light, that's still you making your point. So there is no mm-hmm. such thing as saying something too many times. That's what marketing yeah. is. You say something yeah. at least seven times before it sinks in. It's yeah. okay. There is there is nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and and... Hearing you say that makes me think too of even in school, it's been an hour on one, uh, just a couple of key concepts in, in, in a class for each day. They wouldn't go like, here's 30 or 40. And we're getting at least that with scrolling TikTok or scrolling our emails. There's so many ideas crammed in one little thing that it's, it's so easy to forget that. Oh, but I already said that. And it's, uh, did they grasp that at all? Also, did they see it? Because just the algorithm or whatever. But yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. So I've seen you post a little bit about this and speaking of repeating yourself, what would you say like as far as as introverts using that as a superpower in a way? Do you have any thoughts on introverts using that as a strength? Absolutely. I feel as introverts, we are very, very, very self-aware. And Mm -hmm. that is a very beautiful thing because as a result of being so self-aware, you also become a very good listener. You've always made someone else the emphasis because we don't like talking about ourselves as much, right? So in this day and age where if you're especially trying to build a business or trying to make money or trying to make a customer feel special, that listening skill comes in very, very, very handy because listening to them and understanding their problem and delivering a solution becomes a very good trait to have. And more than that, because we don't like relying on our personality as much because we feel that might be a handicap, we have a tendency to standardize things, right? We love Mm. frameworks. We love things that just work. We love knowing A, uh, one plus one is equal to two, or we we just know. We don't like wing it as much Mm -hmm. because we don't wing it and we rely on systems, and we rely on proven methods for doing things, we know what the outcome is going to be before we even open a message, or we know what the outcome is going to be before we even respond to an email or before something even happens. And that is a very rational way to go about things. And I always advocate approaching things as rationally as possible. Try to be as pragmatic when you're trying to dictate your business or trying to dictate interactions because you are not the hero. The hero is the person you're talking to. And when you're trying to build a personal brand, although it is you as the brand, the person consuming it is the hero. The person you're interacting with is the hero. So if you can make them feel as if they are heard or that they, their concerns, their pain points are being addressed, That's all you need to do. And then you look at the feedback, you see what they're saying, and then you go ahead and interact with them accordingly. So introverts, they have a lot of traits that they might be underestimating. They have a lot going for them. Yeah, that's awesome. Introverts 
stand united. We got to stick together. <laughs> we got to stick together alone. Well, kind of uh, closing it up a little bit. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you want people to know when it comes to branding, personal branding, introverts, strengths, or just any advice for someone just starting out that doesn't maybe feel totally grounded in what to do on the next steps to take, but they know they want to put themselves out there. Start yesterday. (laughs) And I mean this on any level, right? If you've been contemplating or having some kind of an urge to put yourself out there, or if it's calling to you, there's a reason it's calling to you because what you're doing Mm -hmm. right now is maybe not fulfilling enough, or you're feeling like there's something else that's better out there, or you're feeling FOMO, whatever it is, give yourself a shot and just start. And that starting could look like anything. Start an account, open a page, put up a profile photo, even if it's a dog profile photo. I don't care what it is. Give yourself at least some credit to have the audacity to start, right? I feel like some of us feel that we're not worthy of attention or we feel like we we don't deserve to, to be in the spotlight for whatever reasons. That is not, in this day and age, everyone has an equal playing field. If you have an internet connection, if you have a phone, even if it's not a smartphone, you have a phone, internet connection, you can do pretty much whatever you want. It's no longer unapproachable for you to put yourself out there and being found by the right people that you want to. So start at any capacity that you can, even if it is you creating a very simple post once a month. It doesn't matter. As long as you take that action and it feels like some kind of progress, that is still better than doing nothing because you're going to wish that you would have started a couple of months ago, last year, two years ago, three years ago, because things change very, very rapidly. Things progress very quickly once you gain momentum. So don't underestimate that and give yourself some credit. That's the truth. That's the truth. And I can, I agree with, I can identify with things progressing rapidly because I just started this digital podcaster thing just, just uh, in June. And it's just, oh, I remember when I had free time. I remember those (laughs) days. And then it's just, but not that I I look forward to all the busyness and the the fun and excitement. It's just, uh, it's just different. And I wouldn't trade it for anything now. And so true. Just so true. So true, Seema. Thank you so much for us. (laughs) Uh, and it feels tangible, right? You you yeah. don't see it as much. You don't see the movement as much. and You feel yeah. it. And it's only yeah. when you look back like a month, two months, three months, and you're like, whoa, I have made yeah. so much progress that I wouldn't have realized before. Yeah. And then before you know it, you have something very tangible and something that like basically out of thin air. But that only yeah. happens in increments, right? It's like the paper towel yeah. effect. You know what that is? No. So the paper towel effect is is used in like these these weight loss communities where uh-huh. these paper towel rolls that you have, right? Uh-huh. They're very thick and they're they're big and round. And every single piece of towel that you tear off is making it thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, right? So it's not until you've tear, torn off a lot of towels that you realize that it's gotten much smaller. So this is like the opposite. It's you don't realize how much progress you're making unless every single day all of that accumulates and it compounds until it's a yeah. big paper roll. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. And it looks so different looking back to like I look back on the, if whether it's podcasts or emails or any content, basically, it's like in the moment, I'm like, yeah, I don't know who's going to like this. And then like at first, yeah, maybe nobody likes it. And then a couple people like it. And now more and more people like it. And I look back and I'm like, wow, this is actually really good. Who made this? Since I made this? What? <laughs> so it doesn't even feel like me who made it. But but it's like that effect because it's this, and then like getting that time and space in between of making it. And then looking back on it is is so different than in the moment. Because in the moment, it's like it's like the worst critic is in my head the loudest. But then the further I get it almost doesn't feel like me. And then I can go, oh, this is, this is actually decent. <laughs> right? It, <laughs> it's know? that level of skill and confidence that we start taking for granted when that really, really yeah. happens incrementally, right? Like every month when you learn something new, it might feel a little painful, but you're like, no, you, you're getting it done anyway. And then after a year, you're like, 
I cannot believe that today I'm managing to do this when I had no yes. idea how to do that a year ago. And now it's just yeah. like a day-to-day kind of thing and you're like boss yeah. getting all over the place. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I love that. I love that so much. Yeah, yeah. And then and then and then my hope and my 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 desire is as going through the stages as I go on is remembering what it was like and never forgetting what it was like for people that were just starting out because to me, it's always annoying when someone has success in something and it's if they're like a star athlete. Oh, what do you mean? You just go practice every day. And it's like, yes, but I think there were a couple more steps into it than just like you're kind of simplifying. So I never want to like, simplify it too much for the um, beginner. But also at the same time, it's I think it is actually just as simple as what you had said, though, is it's just starting like just whatever it is, starting a page, it starting a podcast, it is starting a, whatever it is. I said this yeah. in a live yesterday when I was when I was doing a solo live is the problem that a lot of people have is when they're at level zero, they're busy worrying about level 10, which is like making it on this insanely huge level and putting such pressure on themselves when they don't accomplish that when they're not supposed to at this point in time, right? So instead mm-hmm. of worrying about the next thing that needs to be done, like the level one or level two thing, they're busy worrying about level 10. And because they haven't achieved it as quickly as they thought, they get discouraged, they get burnt out, and then they stop. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah. that's the sad part. So it's honor the journey, honor mm-hmm. the stage you're in, cut yourself some slack, and know that you're doing the best that you can. And the next yeah. move or the next piece of the puzzle will unfold. It'll show itself. And it always does. You meet the people, you come across things, you come across resources that help you all along your journey. So yeah. it's never it's never linear. It's always, there'll be ups and downs, but you'll get there. Yeah, that is, that is like the perfect thing. I just want to I feel like we're um, at the top of the mountain right now, and I don't want to um, bring us back down at the beginning. <laughs> we're like floating away into the. That's a, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Seema. Thank you so You're much. Okay, welcome. so we're also where can I? I was like, I, you had me, you had me there, and I'm just like, yeah. Coming back to my body for a second. Where can people learn more about you and how to work with you? Well, you can find me on Instagram, which is my mothership, at my account, at Sima Batavia. If you would like to work with me, please just send me a DM. I would be great, like gladly happy to have a chat with you and see uh, how I can help you. And yeah, I'm just happy to meet new people and help as many people that I can. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, I'll link to that in the show notes as well. Thank you again, Sima. It has been such a pleasure same here. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. How awesome was that? I got to keep the music going because it's just, this is feel good song right here and it's just feel good times. Yeah, we're going into, we're in fall. Winter is coming in not too, too long, but there's plenty of crazy stuff that's going on in the world, but we got great people like Seema. We got great people like you listening here that despite all that are still showing up with a smile on our face and showing up to serve and still make an impact. So that's, that's good news. That's good news. If I ever heard it, I need to start including more good news on this uh, show. So I hope you enjoy the conversation with Seema. Um, If you're listening uh, right now, she has a course called strangers to buyers. It is linked in the show notes. She is an expert at what she does when it comes to uh, building a personal brand, attracting your dream clients without that weird salesy feeling um, that I know we all eh, don't really care for. Um, But we got to make money. We got to pay the bills um, because, you know, that's part of it. That's part of it. There's an energy exchange there where if you're putting a lot into something, you got to start receiving something back, right? And I meet a lot of people that are great at giving, but not so great at receiving. So check out Seema's uh, Strangers to Buyers course. That's enrollment is open now. Might not be if you're listening right now. So if you go there and you're like, this doesn't work. Sorry, it's not, (laughs) it's only a limited time. And also I just released an updated uh, the ultimate podcasting resource library. So if you want to start a podcast and you want the, I basically compiled 250 plus 
tools and apps and resources in one place. Um, and I'll link to that in the show notes as well. It's completely free. Check it out. It's like my brain organized and delivered to you. Really cool stuff. So check the show notes for that as well for the resource library. And thank you again for being here and spending your time with us. I will see you next week. Have a great week.